Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Well, for those of you who have been watching, a few months ago I found some lovely spalted logs, some alder, and I cut it up, brought it back, sealed the edges, and we let it dry. And the hope was that we would let it dry slowly, and then we would cut it up into some lumber. Well, I checked the humidity today, and it's down to 14%, and it's not going to get much better where I live. That's about as low as it will go outside, maybe another point or two. But now is the time to start cutting it into lumber. In the process of drying, I sealed the ends, and the hope was that it wouldn't crack. If it dried slow enough, because the log was saturated, it would dry slowly and not crack. Unfortunately, it did crack. But that's not such a bad thing because now I can show you what you do with lumber like this that is cracked or logs like this that are cracked and how you deal with them. And that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do with this log, I'm going to take my hand plane and I'm going to make a flat side, as flat as I can get it, as flat and as level as I can get it, and it won't be that wide, it'll just sort of take the roundness off. Then I'm going to roll it over and do the same on another side, and I should be able to get a fairly right angle piece, and then I'm going to cut it in half, because right now this is four feet long, and it's just too hard for one person to handle on the big bandsaw. So I'm going to cut it down to two feet and that's more manageable and that's more in keeping with what I want to do with this. So the first thing we need to do is take it outside, put it on our saw horses in my outside um, rough area and we'll start planing that down. Now it's a little bit noisy out there so I'm doing all that narration in here but we'll show you outside what I'm going to be doing. Now before I get sawing, a couple of things I want to talk to you about. So there's the log and I've cut it. Uh, it's about two feet long now. And there's the bottom and here's the side. And remember I showed you there's a crack going up here. I want to cut this log in this. I want to cut strips like this. But I also want to be able to book match them. So the way we do that, or one of the ways that we do that, is we mark a big V like this so that as we're cutting strips like this, we'll know where each one of these, in case we get them out of sync, uh, we'll know where each one of these, and this will give me what we call book matched wood, so that when the two pieces are open like this, I can book match them if I want to do that. The next thing I need to consider is how wide I'm going to be cutting the strips because I'm not going to be able to talk to you when the saw is going because it's too loud. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is cut a couple of just a thin strip on the top and bottom just to make sure that I've got these nice and uh, at right angles. But the next thing, I've got this piece of wood here and you can see how twisted it is. It's moving back and forth. This wood is currently at 14%. You all know that I have a wooden workbench, and I just checked the uh, moisture content of it 
with my moisture meter, it's 9%. So this wood, when I bring it inside, is eventually going to drop down to 9%, which is a perfect, in my area, is a perfect uh, moisture content for working with wood. The question now is, you need to ask yourself when you're cutting wood, what are you going to do with it? Because when you bring the wood in and it's going to dry more, it's going to shrink a little bit more. And when it shrinks, it could twist. And I'm not going to get into all the reasons why wood twists, not in this video. Um, but wood could twist a bit. And when it does, of course, you need to flatten it, typically on a jointer. And that takes more wood. So, for example, if I wanted to use three-quarter inch pieces of wood out of this, and I don't know how much it's going to twist, I would probably want to cut probably one inch thick. So you want to cut it big enough to allow it to shrink, but also big enough so that there's a little bit of extra room on it that you can use for flattening. So I'm going to cut these at about one inch because this particular piece of wood I want to use some three, I would end up with some three quarter inch thick pieces of wood. Well, I got those thin strips taken off, so I've got the block as as uh, right angle as I can get it, and now I just need to readjust my fence, and I'll start cutting some about one inch thick slices off of this. Well, that worked out very well, and you can see those marks on there, and now you, you can see why they're so important, because now when I open these up, I can now book match those pieces of wood if I want to make a tabletop or something big where I can actually put two pieces of wood together. So that's our spalted alder that we've let sit for a few months. It's still 14%, so I need to get it down to 9%, so it'll sit... Uh, inside now and the temp we'll get the moisture content down to 9% and that'll be perfect for doing something and you can see I've got all of this wood there's just some of the wood that I've already cut so we've got lots of wood to use in the next few months maybe you've got some ideas on what we could do with this you could send me some suggestions don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, we ask you to do that. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, but stay tuned because we're going to be doing some cool stuff with this spalted alder in the future.